Hello and welcome for another session with Power BI. In the previous session, we studied what different data sets which can be connected, how do we create relationships between the data, the ways to import data, do you want to import the data or do you want to just query the data and pull the data as and when needed or a dual mode of data. We also saw how dual mode restriction implies imported data cannot be converted into a dual mode or direct query data can be converted into an import. So certain nitty gritties of dual mode is what we saw. We understood what are the different types of relationships as in one is to one, one is to many and how to create many to many relationship. And we understood that when we have a more than one mode of connection, in that case, many to many relationship is possible. We also saw what is cross filtering. We also took an example as in what does single side cross filtering and dual side cross filtering do. Then we went ahead and differentiated between how an import and direct query differs. Overall, we saw how to work with the data what we get, how to create relationships. Hello, so today we are going to check on more advanced stuff what we can do in Power BI. We are going to have a look at the transformations which is available to us in the Power BI with the live set of data. We'll see how to create pivot out of the incoming data. We'll try to explore what does M, the official Microsoft Power BI programming language looks like. We'll also see how to group and create query functions and make use of it. And we'll see how to shape the data. Overall, this is a much advanced topic to cover and we'll go into much deeper details with each of the bullet points what we have. So let's begin by importing one of the JSON file which will help you understand how to work with a non-regulated data, a formatted data which is not into rows and columns. So JSON, if I have to give you a background, is a syntax, a programming syntax written in a key value pair and a value part in itself can have lot many key values in it, it in the form of list. So ultimately, if you are parsing a JSON which has the names of the columns as well as the values of the columns in the form of key value pairs, how would you go about doing it? And what you need to do to work with such data? So let's import a sample JSON file which I've already downloaded. And let's see what happens. So as I try to import, it opens this window of Power Query Editor. The JSON file sits right here. Only difference over here is it is not showing the data the way we want to see. So what we do is we'll first explore the data by clicking next to the list. It shows it's a record. So if you want to import this kind of data, you can convert this into table and that data is shown over here. Right? If you want to insert this kind of data, you would have to explore the record. In this, there is a big list of data and you say expand, expand. And this is the data what you have. So this data, if you want to explore, you say convert it into a table. So this is the data which has a key and the value, a typical property of a JSON file. So now while playing with this, we would see how to convert this into row and columns. So if I have to take you over here, we would try to first check. So what we do over here is we see the first column has the column names and the second column has all the values. What we need to do is click on transform you see transpose. Essentially, this is the same functionality what we get in Excel. We'll have to move rows into columns. So in this, these rows will become column. What we now see is the first row is basically the headers. In this case, we can go back to home and we can say use first column as the head. 
names and it is done now this thing is change of values if you have anything to replace so instead of po i don't like po i want to say pot so you can always write it as po make it to pot and i say okay in this case it didn't replace so what happened we'll try to adjust it so it's this advanced match cell contents entire cell contents and you say okay now what does it happen does it change no it doesn't basically it did not change so this value did not work we need to redo it let's say uh, remove errors replace value can we replace a value po with pot port yes now it's done so we've selected the column which we want to replace now we would like to add a column so if there is a split of a column which we probably want to remove those extra hashes we could do so let's make everything as upper capitalize each word and that's done and now what we'll do is we'll select the entire table and now we would say this and uh, we we'll go ahead if there are errors queries keep errors keep duplicates if you want to remove duplicates there's an option to remove duplicates we can choose columns what we want to in this case let's see if we can add or remove a value over here you can go to column we can split a column we've already seen it before we can append and merge queries there is an option of duplicate and reference so in this case if we create a duplicate of a table in this scenario this entire table gets copied over to another table with another name and in that case it can create its own relationships maintain its own relationship sometimes it's important although it adds the workload on the power bi desktop sometimes it's better to work as a reference so there would be two tables but both of the, them would refer to the same physical table as in programming what we say it is by reference and any update on any of these tables would effectively impact and display the effect on the second table which is not true in case of duplicate in this case so this is very important to understand do we want to refer the table or do we want to duplicate it so as soon as we clicked on it the source changed when you clicked on it it is here so this is a duplicate error if we create a duplicate we can have a third table which as of now is copy of the same table this one does not have anything so these are the minor differences what we have if you look closely in the advanced query locator you will find all the details what we did actually from the front end on the right under the applied steps that thing gets logged over here so in a way you do not need to learn this query language which is m uh, it gets auto generated and it's better to get it done in that way while you are learning power bi for the first time going forward if you have new properties to work with you can definitely make use of these you can create new parameters up for your calculations data sources is what we use right now and yes this is what we do with the transforming of a uh, incoming data or json data into a tabular format so now let's have a look at m as a language if you see m the history of it says it's predefined functions defined used in power bi desktop to deliver enhanced features in this way uh, for example if i have to write down all the list of numbers for example so for easy way of doing things would be i would go into a blank query over here and 
I would say the syntax of M for generating a concurrent uh, list would be start figure, let's say one dot dot, and what would your be your end figure? And just say enter. On that you receive bingo all the dates, all the days what you need. Similarly, if you have a uh, another query, for example, list dot dates and you want all the dates starting from date of 2019 let's say 2020 01,01 and you move ahead with how many days do you need in 2020 probably 366 and what is the step the step should be no step should be the last part would be duration so it's more like an hour it's days followed by hours into minutes and seconds so if you do this and you see say this you would easily see date has been generated for all the days till 31st it's a leap year so that's why it's 366 in this way we can use custom queries to generate list and also rename it if there is this would save a lot of your time by reusing this piece of code over and over again rather than generating it in your data source so what we've done over here now is we've converted that query into a table so that's why we have this step over here now let's assume we want to convert this query into a callable function it's very simple to do that to convert a query into callable function what we need to do here is we need to go to advanced editor it opens up a window we just need to say open braces give a parameter name such as start and replace that and give it an arrow mark copy that into the place where you want to change it as soon as you make and write this this query has turned into a function and it would generate a ui for you to generate a list out of it you will see the old existing data at the below grid in the in the background that it shows 2020 as an year calculated basis this which we are going to replace now it will erase this data and throw up a parameter window and it is start as a function and if you look over here it's not generated from this one it's a brand new one from the query so we can say i want to check for the year 2021 and when I say invoke, that means it's calculating basis a query and it would take us for 366 days of 2021. That would be 2022, January 1, 2022. Let's check. Perfect. 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 So in this way, we saw a couple of things. What does reference mean? When you refer a table or a query, it basically points to the same query or a table then if you duplicate a query it creates a duplicate query one becomes two two becomes three a duplicate a same set as of date gets copied over and it's an independent uh, clone of that data to be worked upon now the third option what we saw was create a function so we converted a query into function by writing certain pieces of code in the editor which was this and we say done okay so where there we are looking at different ways in which the m query can help us how can we convert it into function now moving on uh, have you come across a scenario wherein you've been working on power bi and you are supposed to do same set of actions and transformations 
on similar set of file coming across at different different days it can be a report coming out from your system it can be a report generated manually at the end of a month or end of a quarter end of an year uh, and you get the same file you process this file in the same steps and the same way and import it into power bi so doing this ideally would consume a lot of your time and you would have to rather do a repetitive mundane work and ensure that things are in sync how about if i tell you you code once you program once and then keep calling it over and over again what about it so today now an advanced topic of transformation would be how to call functions and make use of it on the same set of data all right so now let's import a file it's a csv file let's go into all file and to show you there are two files with the same format let's work on this piece right now this is the data what i've got this is how it would look like after the import i say it seems it's right so i say load all right now the file has come into our system yes where it is yes c to import if i see the table content it does have all the files let's check and update the query window let's go into the modeling aspect of it and see where it is fine now we have this bit of information with us if we go back and try to see uh, clean the system for example let's call this let's do here this is fine let's go into modeling we convert this into numbers whole numbers that's changed we say okay import we move on all right all right we go into edit query yes now let's format this data we say this should be of the type integer which it is this should be type of number which it is we do not want to show this data so probably we can remove this this is one transformation we want to clean this by removing the colons so we'll go replace values not here but in here and we say replace values of colon with nothing so you see the colons are gone what else do i need over here is uh, the numbers are right transformation this is right and more or less this is sorted that's fine so overall this is what things are and if i have to change it to number it is this is okay i don't like the format which is coming over here so i would like to clean i would like to split this column and this column rather into address 1 and address 2 and i would like to have telephone number in single numeric value what would i do is again i'll call this as dash replace it with nothing it's not present okay and it goes into an others column is it so let's check 
no this is not right so let's change this i say this i say replace i say blank dash with nothing there you are so you need to keep checking what the modifications you need to do now i don't like this term so what i'll do is i would like to split the column i would say by number of characters and i would say specific characters and i say into split into number of columns to split okay there we are we've changed the type into address 1 we can rename it we can rename it building name and i say okay i think more or less this is what is the transformation looking like and i say close and apply this is setting in what changes we've done so if let the changes get over now let's have a look at the data if i say yes it has all the data what i have modified hyphens are removed school name is there building name and address too is there it's moved towards the end and if i have to do this over and over again on a different thing i would first would like to do step 1 go into edit query then i would like to this let's do one thing extract the previous make it into intro tabs i say okay that's moved out so intro steps are here and then i would try to group these it said yes so i have a list of all the uh, transformations what we have done on the imported excel sheet and i believe this same steps i would have to repeat in any of the excels coming back to me in future so let's do one thing the two first steps which i feel i do not need because by any import these two steps are getting added by default so to do that what i'll do is i click here and i say extract previous and i say you can use any name to uh, starting point for example and you say okay so essentially you have moved all the redundant steps out which you will anyway get while you import any new file this is the crux of the matter anything from source till the end is what is important to us now what i'm doing please be careful and understand it carefully is i go into the advanced editor after removing the unwanted things i say copy the source i comment this section out and i say paste and i give an arrow mark now what happens is this is a function call which i can use it anywhere where i want right this is my function call now to call this i will have to use some query parameter so to call this let's now import a new file that file is again a second file of the same format which i had just have a look at what it has you'd see it does not have the split of the address it still has hyphens it still has the active column which i have removed and additionally 
there are some semicolons if there are so those are not here okay and I say okay I bring in the content now what I do over here is I basically I'll just say add insert a step and I'll call the function and bang you go you've seen everything getting applied without ever getting or repeating the steps now you say apply and close and there we are perfect if you have a look at this both the tables have the same kind of data and let's see the second table it also has the same split what it had although it's a new data and this table is also having the same kind of data so together we can make use of this in a much better way and on this further operations can be performed so what we saw today here was how can we reuse a piece of code what you have configured in power bi you can connect to different pieces of information in power bi you need not repeat the same steps rather you can convert those into functions and uh, which accepts parameters so as soon as you add any parameter to the query that becomes a function and you can call the function from that command line using add a new step and basis that you update the same content so this helps you to repeat the code and it's very very important to note that all these queries are available to you in your designer and in the table structure so if you go over here and you say edit queries the window which opens up is something very important the functions are given with fx any query which you write on your own your dynamic query is given in this format there are inbuilt numerous there are around 800 plus functions in this m query it is good to know most of them uh, however if you don't know they can get auto generated you can keep studying the the m query window of advanced query and learn what is happening behind the scenes most important in today's session is functions so try to make convert every piece which is going to be used in future into functions and keep calling them as and when needed a small manipulation it's more like an assembly line you just repeat the you find the assembly line save that assembly line as a function and keep calling that function by updating the advanced query window and your uh, measures and command line which is this will help you achieve most of your things without a pain all right so now what steps we did over here today if i have to explore it into an edit query let's see these things what we do as step is also known as shaping the data when you manipulate the raw data into a standard data which would be consumed by power bi all the steps what you do to make those changes are known as shaping of data the process is known as shaping it's another term used very commonly while transposing the data so very quickly if we have to review the transform tab and just to bring everything on the single plate uh, what I would say is initially we bought varied source of data it could be from these data or some blank queries which would generate data on its own so whatever data is bought into the system comes from these sources it can be in a form of query or it can be form of tables or it can be from different varied sources you can have multiple sources of data in this power bi talking to each other 
if it is a multi source and not all of them are of the load type few of them are of direct query and in then you have an option opened up for you which is many to many relationship the relationship will help you drive the filters in the front end as we see in our next learning session also once the data is in with power bi you've cleansed the data and cleansing shaping transforming all or applying steps all mean the same thing you can invariably use all of them interchangeably and make use uh, and you can clean the data for the consumption in power bi reports that is the next step what we saw over here today is how do we create a repetitive steps get converted into a function by making that steps into a parameterized call as soon as a parameter was added it turned into a function and then function was called in uh, another step in some other transformation we saw couple of two steps one is insert step after which is very helpful to add a function or call a function rather in some other place whereas extract previous after that is one thing also extract previous helps you to eliminate a repetitive step or an unwanted step out of this section so when you have this thing you can do an extract previous and continue with whatever is left as a function so extract previous followed by insert step after is very helpful to basically define a function and calling the function respectively very key important point so that you don't waste time repeating the same steps over and over again with a tendency of making any mistake then let's review what all things are present in this ribbon for one last time one this is close and apply means you have save and applying whatever transformations you've done to this set of query or a table apply means you have just saved it but not pushed it actually to the power bi desktop and close means undoing what you've done where data sources comes from this tab you can have as many data sources or some blank queries you you saw this whatever the sources you use most recently would be thrown up on this recent sources you can create your own data using enter data you can have a data source setting which is more kind of a controlling section or security mechanism as in you can change the data source you can add the data source you, you can see yourself that we have a sql server we have a csv xls a page and a different service so at least four kind of data is in front of us you can change the permission as in do you want to have a privacy level or do you want to make it private or up till the organization or anybody in the who's logged in into the system can view or nobody can view so all this is present you can revoke the approvals if you have given like that you can change the credentials of your servers which you are trying to connect to that is the second piece of it you can set global permissions to all the settings which are available publicly if that's the case and you can change the settings by giving them full access all access so there are four kinds of privacy level private organizational public and none then what we will do is we say manage parameters it's less use feature but you can yourself explore it to add parameters and then and use those parameters it's more like a variables which you can keep using in them in your queries refresh preview and refresh all if whatever you see is not reflecting the changes what you've done you can do a refresh preview and it refreshes the screen properties window you can set two of the properties do you want it to load on the report the same table or no do you want to have it loaded in the refresh sometimes there are some static tables which you may you may not want to get refreshed on daily basis in that case you can uncheck it and save it and do you want the table to be available on the report you can check it yes you want it then you have it on the 
reports as in the Power BI service. This is what the Power BI service, the visualizations which are available, generally available and some additional visualization which you can import. The ways to import is coming up very soon in your next learning session. You can choose the columns which you want to have. Are you sure you want to insert a step? Inserting an intermediate step may affect subsequent step. So it is writing over here. So if you say here and you say choose column, then probably it adds a new step. And what column do you want to choose is what you see over here. The active status is not available if you see it carefully because we removed it. Keep rows to the top, keep rows to the air. If you want to keep the duplicates, you can do it. So that things are there. You can remove rows. You can remove the blank rows. If there are some extra values, you can remove the duplicate values based on your need. You can remove the top row. You can remove the bottom row. These are all transformation steps. It's more like a predefined step which you can make use of rather than thinking of how to get things done. You can sort your content or a column based on a particular uh, format so you can sort it DEHM you can split the column based on some special characters so one is too many and then you can remove it by doing and removing it from here from the applied steps you have other functions such as you want to deal by lead delimiter by numbers by positions, by lowercase to uppercase, by uppercase to lowercase, digit to non-digit, etc. You can group certain columns based on the count of repeatability. But due to the data set what we have, we don't see any repeatable stuff over here. Rather the building name. So if we say building name and you say count of rows, then it would give you 4. So this is one of the grouping. So basically you've hidden that piece. You can do this by making a query into this section or rather calling it directly over here. So you can preserve the original table and you can have a grouping table if you have a query in place. If you know if I what I mean. So grouping does help you to aggregate based on certain things and that will help you. You can do a replace, you can use a very much frequented use and by default Power BI recognizes this is the use first row as header. You can change the data type into one of these as and when you need. Merge queries and append queries. Merge queries is an advanced topic where you want to get a repetitive file with the same content and you want to merge both of them then you may merge the queries. You want to merge it with two, this and this, and you want to do a full outer join. If everything is fine, then it would accept. If something is for toss, it won't. I'm sure the building name, building number, okay left out a join does it accept no does it accept no transformation table where do you want to transform is here does it accept no it should accept over here but it's not accepting all right so this is more like a merging of two tables which is not available to us right now appending is a queries get appended if there are two or more concatenate rows from more tables so current school sample okay see it gets appended and if it is there all the transformation things what you do over here gets applied to the steps so with this we cover the home section of it from the transpose is reversing the row. So if that is the case we can do a reverse row. So that can happen as well. 
if you remove it it is 70 69 70 71 71 if you change it to transpose rows becomes column columns becomes row that is what it is there we are that is what we don't need so we can close this count the rows if they want to see the count is 4 we can remove it then if you go ahead we can rename a column we can detect the data type or we can change the data type you can replace the value you can fill the empty cells you can convert pivot a column around a particular element so if i have to pivot it on phone let's see what happens everything based on phone is shown over here it's rather garbled one so you would not get that much of an info out of it right now you can split the column as in the previous case you can format it into a particular uppercase lowercase cleaning trimming by these are the small functions which, which are anyway available in any database even excel are readily available in the ribbon on the top you can extract certain characters from to to length you can merge the columns like you split the column you can merge the column so if i need to merge these two columns and i would say merge column separator would be space and that is merged again but i don't need it so i will remove it then there are some statistical formulas if you need to count the min man median average standard deviation can be done with this based on the format of the number if it is a number format you do get statistics standard multiplication addition percentage board mass everything you do get absolute power etc so all the scientific calculator related options are available over here you can do a sine cosine tangent as well based on your likings and need you can do a round up and round down you can give an even odd or a sign information you can if it is a date time let me see do we have a date in here we do not we can make use of this date time column structured column you if you know a python script or an r script you can write a python script in this set and run it this is a super advanced version of working with it most of your work in my experience of over a long time with power bi would get done using all these options and the third party tools which i am going to tell you in our next session and that's more than sufficient after all of that once you know everything be it all it i would request the advanced learner to get into an R script or a Python script to make their own visualization. You can add a column, you can have a custom column, you can invoke a custom function. These are the scientific, pretty much simple one. You can index a column from zero, so you can serial number, you can give a serial number to these columns. So so let's go this is the index and then do we have move to the beginning there we are so this is what we have to transform to give serial numbers to it in case right and that is one part of it you can give serial number from any number 1001 0, 0, 1, increment of 2 and see what happens yeah that is also possible let's see if i have a custom column c 1481234 an increment of 1 what happens it doesn't take because it's not able to identify index columns by default are numeric and stick to it in that way all right view column distribution 
this is a very important graphical aspect of this wherein how many count the bar code the bar count the traditional way of counting four sticks and one horizontal to make it five can happen column profile how is it doing based on thing you can consider and view column quality you can identify the data quality is it valid errored invalid is a very good thing to do mono spaced do you want how many space it's just a visualization column profile given to you formula bar do you need to see it i would recommend formula bar to be present because it's one of the starting point and major aspects while writing updating any of the functions so please do not do not remove the formula bar and the additional data what you see it will definitely help you to take decision as in do are you working with the clean data or do you have sufficient data is that data varying as much as you would like to is that data static enough if it is static enough do you want to rather refresh it every time when the refresh happens or do you want to refresh it at your own pace or do you want to refresh only as a query such small calls would be taken based on this data set and this is how i would conclude today's session wherein we studied end to end transformation possible on power bi uh, data we saw different fung types of data which can be connected we also generated our own data by updating the query and generating the data examples what we saw was about the numbers and the dates and at the end we saw a demo of a function uh, which we can keep reusing it in the forward looking aspects of the development with this we are through with the data relationship present transformation and the next session is pretty much very exciting for all of us because that's when all of this data comes to life and we would take decision as in which chart or which graph to be used in which scenarios it's really really exciting and interesting session and we are through with most of the difficult contents of the session till now and much more pleasing contents are coming in our future course thank you everyone for listening